hello and welcome back and today I want to review another QNAP NAS but today's a little bit different. I've talked about QNAP NASs for quite a long time, quite a few years in fact and throughout those ranges I've seen big, I've seen small, I've seen quirky, I've seen unusual, I've seen very very niche but this is the first time I've ever actually taken a good look at their surveillance only range and indeed a lot of people do not even do not even know they have this QNAP has a range of surveillance only solutions these are completely tailored towards MVR surveillance CCRT CCTV whatever you want to call it these are solutions that basically get rid of all of the other stuff all of the custom apps all of the virtualization all the other bits and focus on one utility QVR Pro. Now this is the QVP41A. Again, straight off the bat, not a fan of that name. I don't understand it. I don't know why they didn't go for something a little bit more catchy. If it's going to be dedicated surveillance, you know, call it the QVR Pro series. Who knows? But the QVP41A is a four-bay Pentium-powered surveillance solution. It's got eight camera licenses inside, and it knocks around for about 1,500 quid. It is not a cheap for, but it has a lot of scalability inside, it has a lot of the advantages of QVR Pro, a lot of the software attributes, a lot of the control attributes, the kind of takeover of other camera stuff as well, and it can be synchronized with other devices too. But it has to be said that rather than going for a NAS like that, a NAS like this that has very similar architecture, such as the QVS 472. X, which again has very similar architecture to this, is a bit more expensive but can be used for other things. This is a system that has that same architecture but geared just towards surveillance. So we're going to talk about its hardware, its software, and ultimately help you decide where, whether if you were going to go for a QNAP NAS for your surveillance setup and home or business, whether you should just cut to the chase and go for a surveillance only solution. So let's take a look at it first. You know, the box, I might as well get the unboxing box, uh, bit out of the video out of the way. Um, fairly standard packaging there. Again, very similar to that of the NAS only um, equivalent there, the box there you can see on screen. Let's get the contents out of there. Again, we have looked at the 72X and XT series uh, that are very, built very similar to this. Uh, the Pentium inside this, an eighth generation as well. I think it's um, the 50. 400-00T, um, it's a dual core processor, 3.1 gigahertz, it's got embedded graphics as well. Um, we'll talk a little bit about more about that later on. We've got our box of accessories. So inside we have information on our warranty. One of the things I wasn't a big fan of early doors on this is the fact that it's only got two years of warranty and I've noticed a lot of the Pentium i3, i5 and even the i7 units that came before them. They always seem to have two years of warranty, which really surprised me, particularly with a device like this that's single utility rather than multiple. Um, again, quick start installation guard there just to set the device up. Inside we have screws for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media, but these should be click and load drives. Um, we've got keys for each of the trays, they are lockable, and there's even tiny little heat sinks there to attach to M2 NVMe SSDs. That's right, this isn't just four SATA hard drive bays inside there. You've got two M2 NVMe slots inside there as well. Gen 2 times 3 slots, so 2,000 megabytes per second throughput per slot. That does allow you to have an area of super fast storage or to be utilized in caching. But one might argue, when and where will that be utilized internally? Maybe for scheduled recordings, maybe for live alert and event information for a quicker retrieval, who knows. Um, we've also got two Cat5e cables, this is a one gigabit ethernet box here, no 10, um, sorry, no 10 GBE, no 2.5 GBE here, but it does have two upgrade um, PCIe expansion slots, that we'll talk about later on, those are our accessories. We've also got UK mains lead, this has an internal 250 watt PSU, but of course, you're not going to use the full 250. You'll only use whatever you need when the system's running. And then we've got the unit itself. And hopefully, I won't drop it. So again, huge amount of protection in transit. Fair play to them there. And again, I know I talk about this on a lot of videos. And I'm aware how boring it gets. But hear me out. I will always applaud any brand that goes to the trouble of protecting pretty fragile devices like this in transit. Notwithstanding... The idea that if there was shock damage on this, you know, from being dropped or when it's getting shaken around, motion damage, that you might not even know for three, six, 12 months and it'll be a silent crack 
on the internal controller board there or just a small problem with the heatsink that's been bent out of shape. But on top of that, when brands go to the trouble of adding all this extra protection and packaging transit, that adds a lot to the volumetric weight of shipping these devices. It doesn't just cost them money in foam. And going to the extra trouble on this is an extra marker for them to make sure that these, you know, they don't want these things damaged in transit. So again, I will always applaud a brand that goes to the trouble of really protecting moderately fragile devices like this in transit, even without the hard drives inside. So again, let's get this out of here. There's our other bit of giant foam. And here is our device. That out. You can see it's got QNAP's uh, surveillance branding there, Viso Store or Viso Store. They've had that for quite a long time. It's quite a compact four bay, that it has to be said, it's got a bit of length to it. And there's that additional internal heat sink there as well. Uh, I started talking about the internal hardware there. It does have uh, that Intel Pentium uh, CPU inside, and again, that's embedded graphics as well. On top of that, this has got 8 gig of DDR4 memory. It can be upgraded up to 32 gig maximum, which is always good to hear. Um, it's got those two M2 NVMe slots for additional storage inside as well, but there's also those PCIe expansion slots there on the rear as well at the top. Now, one of those is PCIe Gen 3 times 4 which means, you know, more SSD bays, it means 10 GB interface cards. It's 4,000 megabytes per second throughput potential. But the other one is Gen 3 times 16. That's crazy. And that, that slot there, the chipset one, that can be utilized for GPU cards. Now, I don't know to the extent that this system allows um, performance enhancement cards like that within the surveillance setting, whether it can still take advantage of the card and use those resources towards a lot of the AI-assisted surveillance stuff on QNAP, but I can't imagine they wouldn't take advantage of it. And when I talk about AI, it's also worth mentioning that the latest revisions of QNAP software are starting to take advantage of that M2 uh, TPU card from uh, Google, the Coral, which makes a lot of AI-assisted uh, surveillance and AI assisted processes a great deal easy in terms of internal resources being consumed. If we get a closer look at the rear there we can see those two one gigabit ethernet ports, we can see some lovely USB type C and red USB type A USB ports for external storage and client devices and again that means USB 3.2 gen 2 10 gigabit connectivity there in terms of USB connections you can't use them uh, to interface with the device, but you can certainly attach a lot of compatible devices. And I will also add that there is an HDMI port in there, HDMI uh, uh, 2.0a, which is a 4K port, uh, 60 frames per second. You can use this as a standalone surveillance system uh, when you want to utilize it for surveillance. Another interesting area is there at the bottom, not just that tiny speaker, which will then do loud alerts locally if you need them, but the input-output audio sockets there and when you want to take advantage of um, uh, microphone and voice through cameras on your local area environment. So if you do have an alert and you have this as a standalone surveillance system using a KVM keyboard video mouse using the HDMI and the USBs, you can also attach a mic and what are you doing down there? Alerts. You can get audio in and out directly to the device. I quite like that standalone surveillance aspect of this device. Um, we've got the four SATA bays there that again these support SATA hard drives currently available in 18 TB with 20 TB available on the horizon thanks to HAMR and um, M, um, H, oh, EAMR from WD, sorry. And we've got another USB 3.2 Gen 2 port there, so another 10 git uh, bit port there for surveillance. Lovely to see if you're going to use that for USB cameras, high def cams, or you're going to use that, of course, for a larger, faster uh, USB connected storage backup areas. So you can back up onto it a lot quicker. And again, this does support a lot of the network backup tools available from QNAP to later back up your recordings and more onto other devices. And there's other dedicated QVR tools for making sure your data lives in multiple locations and you have sufficient backups in real synchronized time in case someone steals the cameras or the device, which is really, really important that you don't put all your chickens uh, and all your eggs into that one coop and basket. You've got an LCD panel there at the top to give real-time information about the device, but it's less relevant here when it comes to surveillance. You're not going to be moving your network around too much. Uh, the software supports thousands of cameras with those eight camera licenses included, but you can get more. 
The software we've we're not going to talk about the software in this video because I've done lots of videos on QVR Pro, QVR Elite, and Surveillance Station from QNAP. So you've just got to look for them. There's lots there. I'm not going to be repetitious with you. I will say that it has some great alert tools on there, and there's some great AI-assisted stuff with um, QVR Face out there now. You've got QVR Door, and there are other AI-assisted uh, recording search tools as well that allow you to use AI-assisted um, recognition to go through old recordings and retrieve information in a lot better way than having someone sit there all day looking at your recordings. The system itself is tailor-made for surveillance with QVR Pro, but the real question I think most people are going to have is, is this better than just buying a NAS and using the surveillance software? You know, there's arguments both sides. I'm personally not in love with being locked into just surveillance. I understand there is a need for that. And uh, QNAP themselves do volunteer, and like a lot of NAS brands out there, they do highlight that a lot of users that specifically buy NAS solutions for surveillance will hate it when resources are being pulled away in the background to other services. And a dedicated surveillance system that boots straight into the surveillance and doesn't allow a lot of your system resources, memory, CPU, whatever, to be used by other processes inadvertently, intentionally, whatever, is a good thing when you want your surveillance system to be working tip top 24 seven. On top of that, it is worth mentioning that this device arrives with the bulk of um, QNAP surveillance apps and services and add-ons already pre-installed with the software during installation. This doesn't need to be connected to the internet, which I think is actually quite key because a lot of people that get a surveillance system do not want internet connectivity. They do, they don't want, they just want network only. The cameras in the building, at the front of the building, the back, the upstairs, the downstairs, the basement, and the secure room, but they do not want internet access. And the idea that this has got all of those apps pre-installed means you'll never have to set up internet connectivity. You can, and you've got, uh, remote access options and lots of firmware updates too and there are new apps out there but again some people will quite like <clears throat> that standalone surveillance nature of it and it's a lot of the reason that surveillance only now systems that are branded in that way still exist in 2021 personally i quite like the 472 xt which might be more expensive but i feel is a more versatile tool but if you want that hardware, but you only want it for surveillance, you could do a lot worse than this. And I think the QBR 41A is a very good example of a dedicated surveillance solution right now that is both compact, but incredibly able. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do let me know in the comments if you have. And if you do need a helping hand choosing the right network attached storage solution for the future, do let me know in the comments. Or, more preferably, take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares. It's manned by myself and Eddie, the web guy. We'll help you every step of the way. It is a completely free service, manned by humans. It might take us a day or two to answer your query, but we answer every single one. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you next time.